Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to Tools Day. My name's Kyle and for today's tool, we're gonna talk about a member of the Sasquatch family, so let's get into it. All right, guys, so today we're talking about the Carpentry Chainsaw. This is one of the newer members of the Sasquatch family with Skill Saw. Right away, I'm gonna tell you this thing might look a little bit different than if you go look at it on the internet because this is a pre-production model. It's very close to what they finally went with when they went to the market, but Skill Saw actually came to me out of my job site. I'm less than an hour from their home office. So they brought one out to get my opinion and to just give them feedback on what I thought about the saw. So that is why this looks a little bit different. And maybe in the future, I'll uh, bust out a brand new one, but this thing works just fine and it might not be as pretty, but it's super effective. So what is this? This thing, first off, if, if you guys are aware or have used or are familiar with the worm drive circular saw that Skill Saw has and had out for many, many years, it's what I first used when I got into the trade. Uh, it's what my dad had, you know, it's just a very, I guess, common and super amazing saw for framing. Then this thing probably looks pretty familiar because that's the beauty of Skill Saw. They've got a design, they've got a motor, the worm drive gearing that is just perfect for framing. It is super effective, it's comfortable, and it's powerful. And they took that design, and if you, if you really use one of these, you're gonna be like, it's the exact same thing as my corded, you know, seven and a quarter Skill Saw worm drive circular saw, but it's got this monster chain on it. And you might be asking, why in the heck do you need this monster chainsaw at the end of my circular saw? So for me, I do a lot of larger timbers. And for a lot of builders that are using or having to use eye joist for their floor, their engineered floor system, it's very cumbersome to have to mark and cut all of those. This allows you to cut through an entire stack of banded 11 and 7 8 eye joists in one pass. So right away, huge time saving. But let's talk about this saw real quick and some of the specs. It's gonna operate at 6,300 RPM. It weighs in at just under 19 pounds, which actually is not, it's not too cumbersome, feels pretty good. We've got an, a 16 inch chain bar, but we've only got 14 and about a half inch cut capacity. It's plenty, I mean, that's, I barely ever need more than about six inches. We've got tool free tensioning change here, so we can change the tension on the blade. You can see if I just loosen this real quick, see the tension loosen up. Obviously, you're going to want to make sure that you've got the right tension every time, not too tight, not too loose. Otherwise, you're going to wear out your blade. We can also access the blade entirely very quickly, tool free, so that when we loosen it, we can change a blade, make sure we keep it clean, all those good things. So Skill Saw did a good job not needing any tools to do that. And it's quite quick, as you just seen. We've also got an adjustment of the way you enter in your material. So if you're going into your material, you do want it cocked back a little bit because it's gonna enter in at the top surface where your line is. But if you're going to need to make a nice clean cut, like let's say you're doing some mortise and tenon timber framing, you're gonna want it more perpendicular so your cut is perfect when it dies to where your measurement is on the board. So hopefully that makes sense. We'll maybe show you that in a little bit. So you've got that adjustment. We've also got, um, we can bevel. There's a 45 degree stop. So we can go to 45, but then also we can push a button here and go all the way to 60 degrees. Personally, I probably, I don't know. I haven't done much bevel cutting with this thing. Maybe we'll do a 45 degree in the demo time at the end, but I've never done it. I've always just cut straight cuts. We do have a dust collection port here. It's not gonna do a great job at collecting all the chips because this thing is like a chainsaw. It throws a lot of chips, but it does collect a lot of that fine dust. They did put a handle on here, which really makes it let me get rid of this cord here, which cord. Guys, I assume based on uh, what I've seen from Skillsaw, this has probably gotta be the next cordless uh, offering that they're gonna bring out. They just released the 10 and a quarter Sasquatch with the cordless battery platform, which I, I can't believe I haven't had my hands on it, but at World of Concrete, they just released that, it looks killer. But what I was saying is the handle, it does make it very ergonomic so that you can just really push through your material. So that's a good feature. You do have a brushed motor. Like I said, you've got the worm drive, which does require oil. 
And then underneath here, we've got a splinter guard. So this can move in and out here. And you're just gonna push that to your blade and it's gonna help reduce the splintering at the top of the cut if you're looking for that nice finished clean cut. So um, let's see, what else is there here in this saw? Oh yeah, we've got this rafter hook. I don't know, I'm not taking this up in the rafters guys. Maybe you want this to hang on your saw horses or whatever pile of lumber you're cutting, but it does come with a base that keeps it in the right position. So I would probably just always keep it in the base. You don't wanna mess with this. You don't wanna bend this because this is everything. This is gonna keep your cut being straight and perpendicular. So I would always treat this thing like with white gloves because it's an expensive tool. I went out to Ohio Power Tool before I recorded this and I checked their price is $6.99 on this. So you don't, you don't wanna just be throwing this thing around, hanging it up in rafters, I think. I would take care of it. So the, the rafter hook to me probably not, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Here we've got bar oil, so just like any chainsaw, you gotta make sure that you add bar oil before you use it. Uh, but other than that, man, this thing is, if you've used a worm drive circular saw, this is that. That's what this is with a monster chainsaw blade. So let's go ahead and, I know you guys wanna see it in action, let's go ahead and get some lumber up here and make some cuts. All right, we got this thing oiled up with some bar chain oil and definitely want the eye protection, hearing protection. I don't know where my ISO tunes are, but uh, I hope I can find them because I'm not a huge fan of these foam ones, but it's better than nothing. And we've got our power cord, which I'm not a fan of, but we're gonna go ahead and make a cut here into this six by six cedar, which I know it's not super hard wood, but it's pretty comparable, I would say, to your standard pine that you're gonna have on the job site. This is more what I cut through a lot of, but we'll get some bigger timber in here as well. So let's go ahead and just make a nice cut and see how it does. Okay, first thing I just wanna mention is that I am a left blade guy. I'm a predominantly right-handed. So the splinter guard here on the back is for the right side of the cut. So if I was cutting from this end and this was my finished product, it would be more applicable. I, for demo purposes, oh, come on cord, I'm just better at being on the left side. I'm not as good at cutting this way, but I can do it. So just note that you can see all these splinters here, but the nice thing is it's one cut. You're not having to rotate this material around to make the one pass through. Let's go ahead and make another cut here. I'm gonna grab a square just to make, uh, let's see if we can find a pencil, just to make a nice square line through this. I got nowhere to put this. And I'm gonna go ahead and try to follow that line and see how it does. The one thing I wanna make sure you guys understand is that this saw, this blade, I've had for over a year. And yeah, I don't use it every day, but this is not a spring chicken, it's not brand new, and the blade is not brand new, so I'm sure a nice, fresh blade would cut even better. Now, one thing you'll notice is that when I turn this thing on, it stops relatively quickly. It's not instantaneous break, but uh, it does have a fairly slow startup and a fairly quick break, which I'm a huge fan of. To me, it's important if it comes out square. Now, check this out. It's not perfectly square. I will say that's probably me because I'm cutting from this side, which I'm barely on the magnesium base plate versus the other side. So let's go ahead and switch this up and let's cut from the other side and let's see if it performs 
any better because that is important to me, even though in a lot of rough framing applications, it's probably not to you guys out there. Let's go ahead and switch this around and let's cut it probably the way it's supposed to be cut. All right, so we're switched up here. I got a couple square lines on and we're gonna go ahead and go through and I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the vacuum just so we can see maybe a little bit better, even though I don't think it's gonna change a whole lot. So I put the splinter guard in. It's still not perfect. Cedar is a very splintery wood. I mean, it just does splinter very easily. So I don't think it's that big of a deal, but check that out. I got my square and I think we're pretty darn perfect. So obviously two things. One, use the tool like you're supposed to, even though I probably would still cut on the other side and just try to be better at keeping my plate, riding the surface of the material a little bit better. I was in a little bit of a hurry, but also make sure that you're running perpendicular. So grab yourself a square and make sure, oh my gosh, this is a mess. This is why I hate cords and hoses and everything. What I was gonna say is grab yourself a square and make sure that you're running square here to your base plate. I was about a degree off, as you can see here with my bevel, I'm at one degree to try to keep it square. So, you know, I don't know what that means. This is once again, this is a pre-production model. Things could be a little bit different, but it just made a really nice clean cut. Let's go ahead and make a 45 degree cut here in this material and see how that does. That's something I've never done. I'm gonna unplug it while I mess with it. Even though they did come out with a safety switch here on the saw, which is not that common on corded versions. Got that detent at 45. I'm just gonna leave the splinter guard out entirely. We're gonna extend this out a little bit. All right, we got our marks here. 40, 45 degree cut. I've never done it with this saw. I do notice though that I've got really good visibility of my line, so that's nice. And let's just go through it. I'm assuming it's gonna require a little bit more time to make it through because we're cutting more material, but let's see how it does. Well, I will say this, that was surprisingly easy. Definitely you can see we've got wood chips galore. Cedar makes me want to sneeze. And I don't really know how we did with our cut. Not really close to 45 degrees. Did I start at 45? Not really. What I'll say though is it's consistent. What you see here is what I have on the backside. What that means to me is that it's just not set properly. So I should have done the same thing with the 45 degree. I should have put a 45 degree uh, reference in here. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly 45. So that's something to note. Once again, could be the pre-production model, but always check your tool to make sure that it is accurate to whatever you're trying to cut versus just going off of the numbers that are on the tool itself, just to at least make sure that you're good to go. So that is a $700 tool right there. This is just a simple five and a half inch, six by six piece of cedar. I do have something bigger. Let's make a cut through something quite bigger and see how it does before we get into kind of some final words. All right, so what we've got here is an old telephone pole piece of framing. It's a laminated, looks like about 10 inch column and it is five and a quarter wide. Uh, I still think this is cedar by the looks of it. I'm pretty sure it's cedar, but this is gonna be a pretty demanding cut, I would think. 
uh, because of the amount of material that I'm trying to get through. So let's go ahead and make a cut and we'll see how it does. I felt myself hang up on something for a second. I don't know what it was. I thought maybe it was my, my guard here that keeps me straight, but it got through it pretty good and looks like I'm pretty square actually. So not the cleanest cut, lots of splinters. That could be the material being used, but I'm, I'm genuinely happy with that. That's a pretty darn good cut. I mean, you could hear the motor get taxed a little bit when it was going through, but uh, let's go ahead and make another cut. And what I wanna show you is, you know, we talked about how this saw can either bevel backwards or straight. I'll show you the difference and why it's important to have that feature, I think. So what I wanted to show you guys here, and I've hooked up to the vac because it is a lot of fine dust being thrown around in my shop. So bear with me. I wanna show, you can see here, this guy right here, the way that you can adjust the entry. You see how when I let it down, I'm gonna be hitting the bottom before I hit the top. First off, you don't wanna do that. It's really hard to know where you're gonna cut on your line if you're starting down here. But I'm gonna start it perpendicular, as close as I can get. And you're gonna notice it's just a lot harder to enter it. So first I'm just gonna kinda of come in here and just go ahead and make my cut. So you have to go a lot slower if you do that because you are literally making contact with this entire board as you're going in and it's, it's a lot more taxing and difficult. So what, what skill saw's got is the ability to change the angle of your blade. So when you go in, you're only going to hit just the top. You can make sure you're on your line. And then just like everybody, when they, when they use a sawzaw or you know, really any blade like that, you always kind of seem that it goes better when you come in at an angle versus a straight cut. Hopefully that makes sense. And it's a good feature here on the skill saw. Let's go ahead and cut through this. Now I'm overall pretty impressed with the saw. It's not the cleanest job. Uh, I took the splinter guard off, but remember this is not gonna be what you're gonna use for your fine carpentry. Uh, you're not gonna be making miters for crown molding with this thing. It's a rough framing, super fast, super efficient tool when you've gotta cut a lot of large materials really quick and in one pass. So it's very niche. You're not just gonna use it on every job. Obviously I don't use it on every job and I deal in a lot of large timbers, but it really comes in handy in those certain times. Now, maybe you don't wanna spend $700. There's other options. And let me show you what that is. Now let's say you don't wanna spend $700 on a saw uh, that you're not gonna use a whole lot. You could go out and buy a circular saw that you love, whatever one it is, seven and a quarter worm drive, rear handle style, cordless even, and put on a Prozzi bean saw, chainsaw adapter. This thing is crazy when I first saw it, and I've had this for a while. It's just gonna go ahead and bolt on to your standard seven and a quarter circular saw. And what I love about this is, it's gonna allow me to go cordless. So yeah, it's not gonna have an oiler. It's not gonna keep that chain oiled up. It doesn't have a tensioner. You know, you kind of, once you set it, 
uh, you got to have a tool so it's not as easy. But let's say you just need it once in a while. You only want to spend a couple hundred bucks on the Prozzi beam cutter. You can do that and you can just use your standard corded tools. I will say it makes it a little awkward. You have to, you know, jack it all the way up to fit it in there. So now you're kind of holding it up here. I don't have as much of adjustments to uh, go in and out as easily. You can make it happen. So let's just go ahead and use it. I've never done this on the new cordless skill saw and I thought I'd keep using a skill saw. You could put this on any of the new cordless rear handles out there, but this one is actually a worm drive. It's the only worm drive cordless seven and a quarter on the market, soon to be the second because now skill saw is gonna have their 10 and a quarter. But anyway, let's go ahead and make a cut. I'm gonna turn the vacuum on. Let's see how it does. Holy cow. Huh. Oh my gosh, I'm actually really surprised. That thing cut through way quicker. Looks like I've got way too much slack here on my chain. I'm gonna wanna fix that, but that was, that was, Jared, that was impressive, was it not? That thing went through with tons of power and that was a battery powered saw with a one to $200 attachment. Yeah, the skill saw is gonna cost you a 400 to 500 bucks for the kit. So now you're, you know, for this is the 18 inch beam, this is gonna cost you almost $300 plus four to $500. It's more expensive than the chainsaw, the Sasquatch or Sasquatch, whatever it is, but that was really impressive. I don't know what the quality of cut was. Clearly, I just went through it so stinking fast. That is pretty darn close. Now you guys know that I'm never here to sell you a tool. I don't care what you spend your money on. For me, it's all about just educating, you know, giving people options. Skillsaw didn't pay me to make this video. Yeah, I did get a free tool, but I don't really care about that. My, my whole goal is to give you guys information that you can go out and, and maybe build things with and be more efficient on your job site, spend your money wisely. This just told me that I would, if I was gonna go out and I needed this, I'd buy the skill saw rear handle because that thing just powered through this material like no other. And you can use it with a seven and a quarter blade all the time. And those rare occasions that you might need to get through a stack of eye joists, you can throw the Prozzi on and you're golden. You know, I'm not a fan of all in one tools. I like to buy niche tools that are gonna be perfect for one thing. So the Carpenter Chainsaw is cool having that just for the rare occasion. You've got a dedicated tool. I didn't show it in the video, but it took me probably 15 minutes to change this over to the carpentry, you know, attachment here, this chainsaw attachment. If you guys are interested on in how you do that, I did make a video that I'll try to tag up here showcasing how you put the Prozzi on a seven and a quarter, so go check that out. But uh, for me, it's all about efficiency. It's all about time. You know, yeah, the saw costs 700 bucks, but if you're saving 15 minutes putting it on, 15 minutes taking it off, you know, that adds up also, and money's great, but time is even better because you can never get it back. So I still think the Carpenter Chainsaw is perfect for certain people, certain applications, but you don't have to go that route. You could just get a rear handle circular saw that's out there on the market now. The cordless, you know, options are amazing. Uh, but like always, guys, this is just for you to have a little bit extra information, maybe a little bit of entertainment, and hopefully it helps somebody out there make a decision because they got some large timber to cut in their future and they don't know what to do. I hope it helps. So thank you guys for hanging out with me this morning, and we'll catch you guys on the next, next episode.